Hello. In today's video, I'm going to talk strictly about trading view. No strategies, nothing extra loaded, just trading view. It has a lot of buttons on it, and a lot of those buttons you simply don't need. When you first get your account on TradingView, this is pretty much what you see. Buttons everywhere. Let's start here. All of these buttons are drawing buttons. To begin with, you're not going to need them. So let's get rid of them. Click on this up here. This three line dash thing. Come down here to the drawing panel. Turn it off. And now it disappears. Right away, a lot easier to work with. So this is your control area. You can get to your profile, your settings, everything you need to keep track of the basics of your account. This, of course, is the asset you're looking at. This is your time frame selection. Here is where you can pick between lines or candlesticks or different types of visual effects for your charts. You can compare two or three different coins on the same chart. Your indicators here, all the built-in ones, all your favorites. And if you click here, you see all of your favorites. Now, if you're subscribed to Jackrabbit, when you get your links and you mark them in your favorites, Jackrabbit and all of its strategies will show up here. Along with any other favorites you might have as well. Of course, extra things here, financials, templates... And this bar does scroll. Alerts. This is pretty much where you want to be most of your time, setting up alerts. A replay function if your subscription supports it. So forth. A lot of other extraneous things. Screenshots, full screen. Your current chart that you can save if you want. Additional settings. There's a whole bunch of stuff up here. But really, the only thing you need is the alert button Let's scroll this back your indicators and your indicator favorites and your time frames. Those are the most important things on this top part that you'll use on a regular basis. Of course, if you pick a different time frame, the chart will load with that time frame. And if you do have a strategy loaded, your strategy will be recalculated based upon this chart that you're looking at. So, let's move over to the right side. This is your list. If you click on it, it'll open up a slide out. And you'll have all of your lists available to you for your favorite coins, coins you're watching, so forth. For example, here's my list for all of the 1 billion market cap coins. If you click on this, you'll get other lists that you might have. Now you can make a list, copy a list, rename it, export your list for backup purposes, and you can even itemize your lists based upon exchanges, stocks, so forth. How you set this up is solely up to you. And of course, clicking on a different list will give you different references. For example, let's click on a stocks and it will reload showing all of the various stocks I have saved. That I am looking at and examining. 
and of course it will load all of the relevant data for those stocks. Now you can of course add symbols to your list here. So this button, your list button, is one of your most important buttons. Now next is your alert button, the little alarm clock. This is also important because this tells you how things happen. It sets up your alert. When you set up your alerts, it lists them out and tells you when they're going to trigger, if they're disabled, enabled, and it even tells you your last alerts. Of course, it needs to load, and if you have a lot of stuff going on, that can take a little bit of time. Okay, I'm going to reload the chart to get it to reload completely. Now, depending upon your platform, you may end up with problems where your browser might need to reload the situation. For example, with older equipment, this website can be quite heavy, and it does sometimes require an occasional reload to get certain things to show up properly. So make sure you have the time to spend to work with this, and most importantly, be patient. This website is very intense on your equipment. For a tablet such as what I'm using, it can be very harsh. It can take a few minutes to load, as you're seeing just by watching from this video. You just need patience. Okay, let's go back to the alerts window. Now we'll wait for the alerts themselves to load. While they're loading, this is how you add an alert. You click on it and it will bring up a little window that will let you add an alert to your system. Be sure you're on the time frame you want with the coin that you want and if you have a strategy Make sure your strategy has the settings you want. When you click on this button here, it takes all of the information and builds the alert from that. This button here is the same as the alert button on the top bar over here. That's now hidden. Here are my current alerts. They're set up. One buy, one sell for each coin. The green light means they're active and ready for use. You can pause the alert, you can change the settings of the alert, or you can cancel and delete the alert altogether. If you click on the settings, it will bring up the pop-up. While that's working, this, 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 this are all unnecessary right away. This is group chat. This is one-on-one -on -one chat. For example, if you wanted to send me a message. These are ideas and people I follow. These are notifications that I need to be aware of. And now that you see the alerts here loaded, you see down here a list of my actual alerts and when they occurred, or the alert log. So, as you can see, really not very difficult. And now that we have the alert here, you'll see I've created it using Jackrabbit. 
JR Ling mindset and I wanted to buy on 2 plus all of my various settings and of course my message so you'll be able to see your alerts you'll be able to maintain your alerts from this window and that is important so let's close this out you can sort your alerts here and you can change your listings here how you want your alerts to be displayed I've never actually used this to be honest with you but I do use this once in a while but mostly this is what you use constantly adding an alert of course to get rid of it simply click on it and a slide out will fold back up so trading view looks complicated but it's really not just remember your lists your alerts the alert button here is the same as the plus sign here how to get to your indicators this little arrow here is how to get to your favorites your time frames the assets that you actually want to trade in this is your control system your profile your settings for your subscription everything is accessible through here very simple you don't need to worry about this 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 or this at all this is group chat this is one on one chat this is ideas of people you follow this is notifications and messages from things you follow such as somebody updates a particular strategy you're following it will show up here if somebody you're following posts a new ideal it'll show up here the publish button is on a basis of if you want to publish your idea based upon your chart now trading view has a lot of policies they expect you to follow so be sure you understand them before you begin publishing take the time to read all the little fine print and you can find your experience with TradingView to be well worth it. Now, as far as the chart itself, on a laptop, if you come down here, some buttons will show up. That will give you a way of scrolling the chart and enlarging it and so forth. On a tablet, you can use pinch and zoom or a mouse wheel for a USB mouse, and you can enlarge the chart in and out as well or zoom in and out of course you can also use your fingers to slide left and right to move the whole chart one direction or the other and down here is where you can pick the time frame that you want your chart to look at and it will make the appropriate changes necessary for example if you wanted to see Bitcoin over the last year you would click on this and then it would simply load up Bitcoin nice and simple and easy down here these are all advanced features and quite frankly when you're first beginning I wouldn't worry about any of these unless you want to get into writing scripts testing strategies or anything like that all of this can be safely ignored this is pretty much like the drawing panel drawing panel not something that's going to be of interest right away when you first begin so that's really it trading view in a nutshell very simple very easy and very very straightforward so let's load something Of course, I'm going to load the one and only Jackrabbit. Now it's going to take a few minutes to load. And you'll see it show up here. 
and these three dots mean that it's actually running the calculations the script needs to display on the chart. And there we are. You begin to see it working while it still works. Now for a PC, if you hover over the word, it shows up your control information. All of this. This makes it visible or hides it. This accesses the settings of it. If it's a public script, you can actually look at it by clicking on this. Jackrabbit's code is not public. Sorry. And if you want to update your script, you'll need to click here to close it. This removes it from the chart. Here you can do all sorts of other advanced features. One of the most common for Jackrabbit is when you want to combine multiple scripts. You'll want to move them together on the multiple charts. And of course you have another access point for adding an alert. So really when you're working with everything, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Trading view is not complicated. It only seems that way. Just remember coin, time frame, indicators, establishing your alerts, your coin list, your alert list. That's really all you need to know on TradingView to get your very basic understandings to actually start using it. Whether it's with Crypto Hopper or Three Commas, whether you're using Jackrabbit or you're using one of Jackrabbit's visuals, these buttons do not change. This does apply also to any other strategy that TradingView does allow. But being the author and developer of Jackrabbit, why would I want to use something else? Now, the one thing I do need to make sure that you pay attention to, which is important when you're actually looking at your charts. These are your number of days, and if you zoom in, they'll open up to the time frames. And of course, this is your real-time chart that you can set up here based upon UTC. You'll need to set this through your settings. Take the time to go through your settings and make sure everything is set right. Now I've already said this is the chart. This is the price action and if you click here, which you'll often see me do, I like to use the percent. Since most trading platforms talk in percentages, this helps you determine your point of reference from, say here, at a minus 16% to here at a plus 28%. So that's how you can figure out, calculate, and think around in terms of planning your strategies. Most importantly, practice. Take the time to practice using TradingView. It's not hard, it's not complicated, but it can be overwhelming at first. Weed out the stuff you don't need, focus on the stuff you do need. For example, with time frame, this little arrow here will actually let you pick the time frames you want to show up here constantly just by putting the stars in. So I've marked all of the time frames that I want to see on a routine basis and they show up here. Nice and simple. If you have just a handful of time frames you could use them You can pick and choose exactly the information 
you want to see. Of course, when you're done, if you either click on a time frame. For example, if you have a time frame you want to look at that's not in your checkmarked list, click on it. Now you'll see it shows up here. One week. So now every candlestick represents one single week. So for people that like long time frames, this can be beneficial. For people that like short time frames, choosing one minute can be beneficial. Now for certain algorithms like Jackrabbit, They may not work properly at higher time frames if the coin does not have enough information. So you might have to close it out and reload to get the coin to load appropriately and properly. Of course, just come up here, click on a time frame, and it will reload it on the basis of what you've chosen. There you are. Now you're looking at Bitcoin in one day. You'll notice here it ends mysteriously because this is when it was first starting to track. And that's very true of a lot of crypto assets. They just don't have a long history in TradingView's platform. This one only has about two and a half years. So that will be an issue with some of your strategies that there just may not be enough data to analyze it at longer time frames. But as I said, take your time, practice. Now with the compare function, this is something that's nice. You can actually compare an asset between two different exchanges. For example, if you wanted to compare the Binance version of Bitcoin versus the Coinbase version of Bitcoin. And it's important to consider that if you're looking at volume and trades, particularly if you're one that likes arbitrage. I'm not particularly fond of it, but there are a lot of people that are, and these tools really help you along the way. So. That's it. It's pretty much all there is to TradingView. It really is that simple. Take your time and don't let yourself be overwhelmed. Until next time.